More and more, Malaysian students are very interested to come to Morocco. Uh, they keep asking the embassy, can they come in bigger numbers? We are limited only uh, by the number of seats that Morocco offers to us, which I understand, which the government of Malaysia understands, because uh, university education, tertiary education in Morocco is free. But what free means is that the cost of education is borne by the Moroccan government. So, of course, it cannot offer completely open up any place that it wants because the more students that come to Morocco, the heavier is the burden on the Moroccan government. So we understand that they limit four countries, the number of places that can come. But at the same time, we have set up a committee uh, at the, between the Moroccan Ministry of Education and the Malaysian Ministry of Higher Education to have talks to explore the avenues and the possibilities of uh, both sides sending our students to each other's countries in the areas of study that we are interested in. And I would say that we have received very positive uh, feedback from the Ministry of Education here. I have met with the Minister, Minister Amzazi. I have had many discussions with Deputy uh, Secretary of State, Mr. Khalid Samadi. And the feeling I get is that Morocco is absolutely uh, interested in this initiative. Two ways, to receive Malaysian students in Morocco, but also to send Moroccan students to Malaysia. So we are working very hard on this. The interest of Malaysia here is um, twofold because one, uh, it is an easy country to be in. The students feel safe. Uh, they like the way education is being done. Uh, and second fold is they feel very welcome by the Moroccan people. That immediately they feel very comfortable. They do not feel strange. Food is of course easy. Uh, it's a Muslim country, so we hear the azan, which is very important. You feel very much at home. On the part of the Malaysian government, the reason there is increasing interest is, um, as I had suggested before, is the way Islam is practiced here in Morocco and the way it is being taught in the universities. More and more, we find the students coming back to Malaysia after studying in Morocco that it is very suitable to the climate in Malaysia, when they join uh, the education sector, when they become imams, etc., the uh, the sermons that the khutbas that they give is very much in line with what we in Malaysia practice as well. Because of that, uh, various sectors in Malaysia have approached the Embassy of Malaysia to ask. Can you get more places for our students? Can you work with the Moroccan government to try and get more places? And we are saying both sides are working on this. The interest is there. So we hope this will continue. I will begin with uh, what is always important to governments, which is business. Um, there is a group of Malaysian and Moroccan businesses. They've set up a, a grouping. Uh, but Truth is, it's not very active. Uh, they set it up about 11 years ago. I think the initial two years they were active, but after that it went a little bit quiet. Uh, we are trying to revive it again. Uh, I have had a few meetings with ASMEX, the Association of Moroccan Exporters. I have had very good discussions with them. President Santisi is very aware of the opportunities in Malaysia. He was the one who raised a couple of things with me, which I thought was very interesting. I had since brought it back to Malaysia and raised it with our ministers there. There is, very, uh, there is a lot of interest. Uh, so that is on the business sector. We need to do more. Uh, on the people-to-people -people relations, there is uh, an association that is headed by uh, Sidi Hassan Amari, which talks about cooperation in education between Malaysians and Morocco. Uh, he has helped Malaysia very much in increasing the number of students coming to study in universities in Morocco. So that, I believe, is a very active association. So these are the two areas that I can name immediately that there's cooperation going on. Malaysia is a monarchy and again because we adopted many things from the British we also adopted in a way uh, but this is actually a historical practice in Malaysia where the monarch um, bestow, bestows 
on uh, people that it feels has, you know, uh, served the country in various uh, ways. Uh, in Malaysia, uh, so Datu is a title. Like in British, it would be Sir and Dam. Uh, in Malaysia, the titles do not distinguish between gender. Uh, between gender, between male and female. Yeah. A male will get a dato ship, a dato, a female is also a dato. We don't, we don't distinguish. Um, so um, what happens is uh, the title then, because it is quite a formal thing, uh, so there are two categories, uh, those who serve in the public sphere, so public civil servants like me, uh, and then a separate category is for those who are involved in business, arts, sciences, uh, and all of that, where their work contributes to the development of the country, where our work contributes to good relations among countries, etc., etc. So I have been very lucky. Uh, I have been bestowed with this title last year from the head of the state that I come from, which is Pulau Pinang, Penang. Uh, in the ceremony to celebrate his birthday last year, he had included my name to be awarded this honour. So that is what Datuk means. Many of the titles are given to Malaysians, but we also recognise that many people who are not Malaysians, who are non-Malaysians, who, uh, who are citizens of other countries, also do a lot of work to foster good relations with Malaysia, to do things that benefit the people of Malaysia. So we have also conferred the titles on uh, people from other countries. We have. We have many. So we give it, like I say, in many different areas for the arts, for the sciences, for religious uh, advancement of the ummah, uh, for many things. So because you have categories, um, it makes it very focused. So when you look in a category and then we look around the world and embassies also help by making recommendations back home to say that, look, this person, uh, it's always a person, it's never an organisation because the title is to the person to say that this person has done a lot to further relations between the two countries, etc. And then uh, it, 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 becomes, uh, it comes up for consideration back home. The one Dato I know of immediately is uh, Dato uh, Hassan Amari, very much because of the uh, good relations he has fostered, the fact that he has opened up the opportunity for our students to come here. He has uh, helped us very much to have more seats for our students to come to university here. And I'm very pleased. Uh, I think he was also con uh, conferred with the title Dato last year same year as me, but from a different state. Uh, and I was very pleased to see that the Sultan of that state conferring the title of Datuk to Datuk Hassan Amari. So that's a Moroccan that's helping us.